Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to go with my review of SummerSlam 1993. Starting off the evening with our first match of the night, it is Ted DiBiase versus Razor Ramon. Uh, I thought it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both Ted DiBiase and Razor Ramon with Ted DiBiase keeping the pace of the match. But Razor hits his signature Razor's Edge on Ted DiBiase, pinning him for the three and your winner of the match is Razor Ramon. A couple of things I'll take away from this match. Number one, this was a good opening matchup for SummerSlam 1993 and Razor Ramon. Razor Ramon to me in WWF, you know, E or WWF, uh, in a lot of ways underrated. Uh, Scott Hall, you know, as Razor Ramon, man, number one is one of my all-time favorite wrestlers, you know, being Razor Ramon. Uh, the gimmick was great and uh, he had a phenomenal career as Razor Ramon in WWE, in my honest opinion. I mean, that WrestleMania match he had with Shawn Michaels, the first ever ladder match at WrestleMania, stole the show, you know, and it just goes to show you how strong, at, at one time, you know, how important the Intercontinental Championship was for WWE back in the day, man. I mean, a lot of, you know, notable superstars have held that championship. Bret Hart, Mr. Perfect, Shawn Michaels, Razor Ramon, I mean, you know, that belt alone is just synonymous with professional wrestling. Maybe not so much now, but back then, I would probably put that number two right below, you know, the world championship, hands down. But again, hats off to Razor Ramon for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we're going to our next match of the night. It is Jimmy Del Rey and Tom Pritchard versus the Steiner Brothers for the WWE Tag Team Championships. Uh, the match itself was a decent matchup. Back and forth matchup between both teams. But Scott Steiner ends up hitting the finish, hitting for the three, and your winner of the match, or winners of the match, I should say, are the Steiner brothers. Again, hats off to the Steiners for getting the win in this matchup. Moving off from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Mr. Perfect versus Shawn Michaels for the WWE Intercontinental Championship. Number one, I thought it was a great matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Mr. Perfect and Shawn Michaels with Mr. Perfect keeping the pace of the match. But Shawn Michael ultimately gets the win by countout. So hats off to Shawn Michaels for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we're going to our next match of the night. It is Erwin R. Scheister versus the 1 2 3 Kid. Um, I thought it was a good matchup. Back and forth matchup between both Erwin and 1 2 3 Kid with IRS keeping the pace of the match. But IRS hits a devastating flying clothesline on 1-2-3-Kid, pinning him for the three, and your winner, winners of the match are Erwin R. Scheister. Hats off to IRS for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Doink the Clown versus Bret Hart. It was an okay matchup, back and forth matchup between both Doink the Clown and Bret Hart, with Bret Hart keeping the pace of the match. And Bret Hart ultimately gets the win in this match by disqualification. Hats off to Bret Hart for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go to our next match of the night. It's kind of an impromptu match, if you will. It is Jerry the King Lawler versus Bret Hart. Um, I thought it was a decent matchup, back and forth matchup between both Lawler and Bret Hart, with Bret Hart keeping the keeping the pace of the match. But Bret Hart applies a sharpshooter on Jerry Lawler. Bret Hart does not release the sharpshooter, and your winner of the match due to disqualification is Jerry the King Lawler. A couple of things I'll take away from this match. Number one is, you know, kind of the rivalry between Jerry the King Lawler and Bret Hart. This all pretty much stems from the fact that when Bret Hart won the King of the Ring, which was a phenomenal King of the Ring tournament, by the way. And it, it just stems from that. And obviously Jerry the King Lawler being the king, you know, obviously there's a little hostility between both Jerry Lawler and Bret Hart because of that. Um, but this was a great storyline, man. It lasted for quite a while. And how we were building up the storyline, you know, Jerry Lawler was attacking the Hart family, you know, pretty much always talking about Stu Hart and making fun of Bret Hart and Owen and everything else like that. So the storyline itself was a really good storyline. Um, and it kind of made Jerry Lawler at least relevant as far as being an in-ring talent. Um, but I thought the storyline was great between Jerry Lawler and Bret Hart, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? To see who the best of the best really is, you know, it's, especially with Bret Hart winning the King of the Ring and then, you know, Jerry Lawler being Jerry the King Lawler. So I thought the storyline was awesome. But uh, again, 
I was kind of hoping Brett got the win here, but they ended up giving the win to Jerry Lawler by disqualification. So hats off to Jerry Lawler for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Marty Jannetty versus Bora Ludwig. Um, again, don't know much about Bora Ludwig. I thought the match was okay. Back and forth matchup. Ludwig was keeping the pace of the match with Ludwig hitting uh, the torture rack on Marty Jannetty, and the winner of the match by submission is Bora Ludwig. Again, hats off to Bora Ludwig for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the night. It is Giant Gonzalez versus Undertaker in a rest in peace match. I thought it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between Gonzalez and Undertaker, with Undertaker keeping the pace of the match. But Undertaker hits a clothesline off the top rope, all on Giant Gonzalez, and your winner of the match is The Undertaker. Again, hats off to The Undertaker for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go on to our next match of the night. It is the Smoking Guns and Tantaka versus Bam Bam Bigelow and the Head Shrinkers. I thought it was a good matchup, back and forth matchup between both teams with the Smoking Guns keeping the pace of the match. But Tantaka hits a roll up, pins for the three, and your winner, winners of the match are the Smoking Guns and Tantaka. Hats off to the Smoking Guns and Tantaka for getting the win in this matchup. Moving on from that, we go into our next match of the evening. It is the main event of SummerSlam 1993. It is Yokozuna versus Lex Luger for the WWE Championship. I thought this was a great match. Back and forth matchup between both Yokozuna and Lex Luger with Yokozuna keeping the pace. But Luger ultimately gets the win in this matchup. So hats off to Lex Luger for getting the win in this matchup. A couple things I'll say about this match too, man, is... Number one being Lex Luger. You know, they were really hyping up Lex Luger in the early 90s to be the next Hulk Hogan. I mean, they had the Lex Express where, you know, he would get in his tour bus and go across the country and pretty much promote himself as the next, pretty much Hulk Hogan of WWE. Um, Yokozuna, again, absolute legend. I mean, a big fan of Yokozuna, definitely underrated. Um, you know, Yokozuna was one of a kind, man. I mean, he brought a whole different dynamic and the professional wrestling, and him being managed by Mr. Fuji and Jim Cornette, um, it just worked. And I mean, he brought in, you know, the gimmick that he had was more of like a sumo wrestler becoming a pro wrestler, and it just worked, man. That bonsai drop that he would hit, that finish, you know, I, my, my hats go off to anybody who ended up taking that finish, because it had to be brutal. I mean, I think Yoko Zuma had to be every bit of five, 600 pounds. I mean, he was huge. This guy was a unit, man, and an absolute legend. Uh, rest in peace to Yokozuna. Um, but, man, talk about a career that was kind of cut short, man. I mean, he could have been multi-time world champion. Uh, I remember him teaming up with Owen Hart. It was a phenomenal tag team, in my honest opinion. And that was kind of, you know, getting towards the end of Yokozuna's uh, in-ring career and everything else like that. But uh, talk about an absolute legend, man. I mean, you're never going to have another wrestler like Yokozuna. This is not going to happen. And the aura around him, man, when the theme music hit, everybody pretty much had their eyes locked on to Yokozuna. Because the guy, again, almost like a Vader, got into the ring. And he, the, Yokozuna was a big man, but he was able to move relatively fast for a man that was his size. I mean, you're talking 600 pounds or 500 pounds plus, moving around at a relatively fast pace in these matches. You know, and just devastating anybody that he stepped in the ring with. Just an absolute legend. Again, Lex Luger, same thing, man. An absolute legend, Hall, future Hall of Famer. Um, I'm pretty sure he's not in the Hall of Fame yet, which is ridiculous. But uh, phenomenal career, man, all around for Lex Luger. And uh, but again, they were really hyping him up to be the next Hulk Hogan in the er you know early '90s of WWE for sure. I mean, they were definitely the boat was sailing towards Lex Luger to be the next. Uh, flagship bearer of WWE, hands down. So, again, hats off to Luger for getting the win in this matchup. But as far as the pay-per-view, I always give these pay-per-views a rating from 1 out of 10. I'm going to give SummerSlam 1993, I'm going to give it a solid 7, man. I think 7 is a pretty good number for SummerSlam 1993. There was a lot of notable good matches on here. Uh, number one being the main event, Yokozuna, Lex Luger, Giant Gonzalez, which is Undertaker in a rest in peace match. And even the opening matchup, Ted DiBiase versus Razor Ramon, you know, phenomenal matchup, man. 
great matchup, but I'm going to have to give SummerSlam 1993 a solid 7 at best. But this is my review of SummerSlam 1993. I hope you guys are out there staying safe. Be careful, and remember, stay classy.